we have um, two boys, um, age 16 and 17, um, that are both brothers from Afghanistan. We fostered uh, the young man who was 14 and a half. I'll never forget, I got the phone call on the Tuesday and said, would we be willing to uh, look after a young person uh, from Iraq? The young people that I'm looking after at the moment are both from Afghanistan, but in the past, I've also looked after youngsters from Kurdistan. We decided to get into fostering because we really value young people and we know that not every young person has had a really good experience. It is so rewarding to see our young people who have arrived in Brighton find their feet and find safety. To foster you have to put others before yourself and you have to put yourself in their shoes. The biggest difference is is the language barrier. You know, body language is really important. You know, your gestures, what you do for them is, is massive. There are lots of creative ways of communicating with games, so it can actually turn out to be quite fun. Uno, the card game, has just been brilliant because right from the off, it's, it's kind of one of those games that's a visual thing. Um, we use Google, Google Translate. When it comes to doing official meetings and that, then the social worker will get an interpreter in. When football was on, that's quite a good thing to watch together um, for him to feel safe with us. Doing things together, like cooking together, food is a great connector. Me and my husband both love cooking. We've bought cookbooks, Afghan cookbooks, and we've made lots of sort of homemade food for them. You know, that was our little kind of initial way, and still is, you know, a way of showing them that we, you know, we really value them. When I think about why children might need sort of refuge in this country, asylum, it really does bring it home, just in terms of the amount of trauma and difficulty that these young people have had to experience. It just really reminds you of the, the, the difficult journey that, that they have had, both physically and mentally, hearing firsthand, you know, from, from, from our boys, you know, the experiences that they've gone through. It just, yeah, makes me feel more passionate for doing this, this type of fostering. When he came to us, he all he had on was the clothes he had, he had nothing else, and he had to be smuggled out because, the, you know, the Iraqi authorities were after his dad. It's a long journey, they've been through a lot, and it takes some time. We really need to have an understanding of their needs and their experiences. It's everything and everything, you know, in terms of trying to access education, trying to build up their language skills, you have to really kind of take it right back Back to basics. Their social development, their health needs, educational support, facilitating uh, the process of claiming asylum. But back home in Afghanistan, they, they didn't have mobile phones. So navigating, you know, how to use them, what they're for, you know, what to do in emergency, everything and everything. And sometimes things that you don't sort of imagine. We wandered around Brighton for a good couple of hours trying to familiarise himself. you got to remember, He's come from Iraq and coming to Brighton's a massive shock to him. In his country, he can drive at 14, he can drink at 14, he can work at 14. Um, so he was doing all this stuff. So, you know, it's a big eye opener for him. They do arrive feeling very disorientated and lost. We can make them feel welcome by helping them understand the local area, um, build social networks within their own community as well as the wider community um, and generally get a sense of place. You know, right from the very start, we, we introduced them and took them to a mosque in Brighton and the imam there was really, really lovely and welcoming and, uh, and that has been their main source of support in terms of meeting other young people and other adults from their own culture. From the day that they arrived to where they are today, it's, I'm so impressed. We have learned as a family so much about um, Muslim faith, you know, Afghanistan. I mean, the boys are so well educated in terms of their, their country's history and politics and all sorts of stuff and family traditions and 
food and cooking and all sorts of stuff. His culture is very family orientated and he gives so much back. You know, over meals, we would have, you know, conversations for over an hour talking about his culture and he would enrich our lives. It's been a real sort of two-way process in terms of sort of teaching, teaching each other. Um, and we really value that. And I think that's something that we never expected to experience. It's not until you actually meet someone who's really gone through that, that you really realise just how hard and tough it is um, and how traumatic and emotional and, and what, what they've given up, you know, in terms of what they've left behind. And, and I really want them to kind of be valued and have a really lovely family home. Uh, the support that we had in terms of kind of, um, you know, the information, the process, what would happen has been really great. Um, and a year and a half later, you know, it's, it's been a really amazing experience and totally different um, to fostering sort of UK children. So the social worker, because they deal with a lot of unaccompanied minors, they've got a lot of experience. So anything, you know, we were worried about, um, you know, we could pick up the phone to her and also I know other foster carers that uh, look after unaccompanied minors. I just pick up the phone with another foster carer and we work it together, updating the social worker. So there is a good network of support there. I think if, if you're thinking about it, I think it's a really rewarding experience. Um, we're so glad that, we, that we've done it. I would encourage anyone you know, if you've got a spare bedroom um, and you, it's right for you, just do it. Just do it. We can't change the past, but we can create a better future for them.